All right, uh, let's go ahead and, and get this kicked off. Coaches, uh, welcome, thanks for joining us. We are so excited to be able to announce uh, all the behind the scenes from stages. Rick and I have been working on this uh, for, for what seems like an eternity, Rick, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's been such a big, big push to, to get this through and we're just so grateful that you're here uh, and, uh, and that you're willing to, to look deeper into stages. So. Let me give you just a quick introduction about myself. My name is Dan McFadden, and uh, I have been the CEO of Better Basketball for about a year and a half now. Rick and I have been working together. Uh, I've been uh, mostly behind the scenes and uh, decided it was now time to really start stepping out and uh, let me know who I am. Uh, but Rick and I, we, we've really enjoyed working together, we've developed a great friendship over the last year and a half, and uh, started stages well over a year ago now. Uh, where we really talked about it. And so uh, this is by far our, our biggest product launch together and our biggest product launch for better basketball. So uh, so welcome, thanks for joining us. And uh, we couldn't be more happy that we're here with this. So uh, I, I just want to dive in. We, Rick and I want to start by just telling you a little bit of the, the history of how we got here. Uh, because stages, it's, it's a little bit different from many of the products that we put out. Many of the products that we put out are focused on you know, direct uh, systems and, and strategy for coaches. And you know we've done player development things, but Rick and I talked, I don't know, what was this Rick? Probably just, just a few months in to, to me starting to work with you in better basketball. And what we began to talk about was what are we gonna get the coaching community next? What's the next great innovation that we really think that we can bring? Uh, and at the same time, What's missing in the game? What's, what's a, one of some of the biggest pain points for coaches? And as I began to ask Rick, you know, because he, he's the brains of the operation, I just help run the business side of things. Uh, but I began to ask Rick, what do you have? What have you been thinking about? And I remember where I was at that moment. We, we talked about a couple quick ideas. And then Rick stopped and he said, a little bit sheepishly, you know, I had this idea over 10 years ago, and I wrote this one phrase in my notebook. And he told me this whole story, and he said, it's, it's stages, not ages. And I think he talked for about 30 seconds, and I just got it. The light bulb went off in my head, and, and I was just blown away by the concept. And, uh, and I said, Rick, we've got to do that. And I think your first response, Rick, was something to the, to the tune of, yes, but it, I think it's just too big. And... Uh, and so over the last, you know, 14, 15 months, we have been strategizing and plugging away to build stages. And uh, so, Rick, why don't, why don't you tell them a little bit about how you got here and some of the backstory and where stages came from? Well, uh, uh, yeah, where it came from. Let's see. Um, it, you know, it's similar to read and react. Uh, there's a problem. Boy, I'd like to solve it. Uh, everyone wants to solve it, but our traditional ways aren't working. So um, uh, a lot of things, a lot of things, kind of came together. Uh, you know, looking at systems over in Europe and and um, and friends here in the states who or just trying to get players better, you know? Um, uh, um, at the, the, I mean, the root cause of why your system doesn't work as well as you want it to work uh, boils down to the ability of your players. I mean, this is what coaching, you know, has become as, okay, I've got to figure out what I can do with what I have, you know? And, how do I hide my weaknesses, play to my strengths, and 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 that kind of thing? Um, and how much more time and energy? How much? How much more pleasant would coaching be if uh, if we could depend on uh, mm. certain skill sets of our players? And, and so, as you look and you you watch folks train and. I mean, there's a lot of great trainers and teachers out there uh, uh, worldwide. Um, 
the question always came up, it, it always comes up like this. Well, what do you think should be taught to a, you know, to a 10 year old? Because then the conversation would always uh, uh, come around to like, well, if, if you could do this, if you could really make an impact on the basketball community, uh, what would you do? And I'd say, well, I would set it up like the education system, you know, uh, and teach things, you know, progressively, you know, linearly, uh, where this thing builds on this and this builds on this. And instead of just, uh, you know, catch it if you can kind of stuff, uh, what, the way it was when I grew up. Um, and so the question would always come up. The, the question that would follow would be, well, what do you teach a 10-year-old? What do you teach a 6-year-old? What should a 16-year-old be able to do? What could we expect? Well, the next answer, the next, the, the answer to that question is another question. Uh, where in the world are you talking about? Are you talking about the streets of New York? Or are you talking about the, the, the plains of Kansas? Are you talking about, you know, there's a big difference between uh, a, uh, a 14 year old in this part of the country and a 14 year old somewhere else. And so it kind of struck me that, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this by, by ages. Many of the martial arts don't do it by ages. They say, come in, let's see. Uh, uh, oh, we don't care that you're 23 and you're 43. We don't really care. What can you do? You're not going to get this next belt until you can perform this, 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 and pass this very practical test. If you can't do it, sorry, you can't go on. If you can, go on. And so some, for, for, uh, for many athletes, uh, that says, hey, I can go as fast as I want to go. I can go through this track and, uh, and uh, develop at my own speed. And if it means I can fast track for a while, great, I can. I won't be held back because, well, you don't, you're not supposed to teach this at a particular age. So uh, that's kind of where, that's kind of where it came from. Uh, I mean, I'd already kind of bucked the system with read and react. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe what we've been trying to do for what, a hundred, over a hundred years now in basketball, teach things by ages, maybe we should, maybe it should be your stage of development. And that was one of the things that, that captivated me so much when, when you came up with this concept was as soon as you said the martial arts belt system, I just got it. And, you know, in martial arts, it doesn't matter. Everybody starts in as a white, as a white belt and you have to prove your way through. And, you know, some, you know, typically a five-year-old is going to take longer to pass their, their white belt than a 14-year-old might. But they still have to learn the foundational skills step by step. Uh, you don't let them just come and skip. And so uh, it, that was just unbelievable to me. So now you did this, a, a very rudimentary version. You did this with the team that you coached, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But all the, the players, as I recall, you gave them all notebooks, right? That's right. Yeah. And I know many yeah. coaches have tried that and done that, Dan. You know, they've tried that. I did too. I've still got them. Okay. <laughs> I'm a hoarder, I think. Um, but uh, the problem is, is, is the technology. The technology was not there uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it, it, it was, uh, you know, I almost lost my family trying to do this because you're trying to get to every kid and monitor them every day in season, out season. Hey, where are you in, in, in our workouts? Where are you? Well, I need to test you on this, you know, and uh, it's just too in, too time intensive for one coach or our coaching staff to take care of a whole program, and you're just kind of hoping that the players will hop in, do it themselves, and follow your uh, your written instructions because you just can't be there with them uh, like you like you want to be. And so yeah. the thing that's changed, my friend, is the technology, which is in your ball's in your court now. <laughs> and, and that's where Rick and I really partnered on this well. You know, I, 
my background's in technology. I've worked a lot in technology companies. And so when Rick said to me, you know, the big problem here is technology. I, the, there wasn't the technology at the time. And I don't even know how we do this technology. Well, I'm thinking in my mind, of course we know the technology, you know, so let's just, let's just get after it. So uh, it, it's been a really great partnership to pull our two skill sets together. And uh, we can't wait to, to get them into your hands as stages. So, uh, so Rick, talk to me a little bit about um, why, why stages, what problems does it solve, right? So you've talked some about the martial arts belt system, but really, really at the core, what are the, the top fundamental problems that stages solves for coaches? Wow, now there, there's a bunch there, Dan, but my, the first one that comes to my mind is um, the disconnect between uh, coaches, players, and parents, or influencers, uh, if you want to call it that. Um, people who are not coaches who speak into the lives of, of uh, the players. And um, uh, I want to be able to put all those on the same page because I know that if I could, or if I could just solve part of that, uh, uh, coaching would be um, so much better. Um, the, uh, I mean, I just hate to see coaches uh, leave, leave this business, leave this. I mean, it's a it's a great livelihood. It's a great place to build a legacy. But uh, there's a, there's a lot of factors that seem that, well. There's a lot of things. I don't want to dig into the problems that that run coaches off. But even those that that don't leave um, that kind of disconnect between, hey, why is my play, my son or my daughter not playing, and the coach saying, well, uh, you know, you don't know enough about the game for me to explain that to you, uh, and then the player thinking something else. Man, if I could just solve that, uh, I think it would be better for all all three parties. But now that that's the first thing that I, I just want the experience to change and improve for all three parties. Yeah, yeah. Now, so when, when stages comes out, right? Like in the martial arts belt system, everybody understands what a white belt is, what a yellow belt is, what a brown belt is, what a black belt is. There, there's a generic understanding uh, between all three of those parties, right? Uh, how how is that going to work between coaches, players, and parents? That that unified language. Great, great question. Great question. And I think that's the that's what kind of is separating or will separate stages from anything else. Okay, is uh, uh, this is not just a training system. A training system would say, here's what you need to work on and work on this for X amount of time or uh, until I can say go on or that, that time. Look, I wanted to create a series of tests that could not be cheated and, and the players looking for mastery. I mean, I, I just wanted to take any kind of uh, 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 subjectivity, no, objectivity out of it, uh, people's opinions out of it um you know shooting is an easy one i always use this as an analogy i've been talking to a lot of my friends about this as i've been working on it and and when they ask me i say look forget about all of basketball for a moment just forget about it for a moment uh because holy cow uh, there's uh ignition the ignition stage starts with three categories and by the time you're at stage seven, we've got 10 categories that the tests fall into, 10 buckets, okay? Uh, so let's not talk about that. Let's take one bucket, like shooting. And in shooting, let's, let's go even more narrow. Let's go to something like free throws, okay? Um, the question is, uh, let's start at the top, okay? If you're going to pass stage seven, which in my opinion is if you can if you can pass all of the tests of stage seven, you should be able you should be able to play at the next level. Okay. Uh, and 
for those that don't know the numbers there, you're talking maybe three to five percent of players, you know, high school at the high school level go on to play at the next level. So this would be a very tough stage to test. So the question I ask my friends is this, hey, free throws. Uh, if you're going to play at the next level, what do you think you should be able to hit out of 100? You know, I mean, what, what, should, what should we forget about what it's really like out there? What, do you, what should it be? Now, I'm asking coaches, Dan, okay? And they're coming up with 85, something like that. I've had 80, 85, and I've had 90 out of 100 if you're going to play at the next level, okay? Well, that's, that's rarefied air up there, okay? But see, the only reason that players go into the next level, say, say uh, above high school, is that there's not that expectation. There's not that number. There's not that mark that says this is what you should be able to do at this particular stage. So let, let, let's let's say it's let's say it's 80. I'll be real generous, okay? I think it should be higher. But let's say it's 80 out of 100. Then the next question is, all right, then it's stage six. What should you be able to hit? Well, 70 out of 100, okay? Uh, stage five, let's just keep going down. Okay, uh, 60. Uh, stage four, 50 out of 100. Stage three, uh, 40. Stage two, 30 out of 100. Stage one, 20 out of 100. Uh, ignition, look, I think anybody who's never played the game can pick up a ball and heave it up there 100 times and it'll go in about 10 times by accident, all right? Uh, so, if that's the case, then I think that uh, then, say, starting with the ignition stage, um, uh, you've got to build teaching in, into the test. And so, it's not just tests that I came up with, things that, that can actually be measured in basketball. But I wanted to create a, a, pro, a teaching progression that would enable someone to shoot 80 or 90% from the free throw line at the time they get to stage seven. They've, we've covered the mechanics. We've covered uh, uh, the mental skills part of, of free throw shooting. Um, uh, they, they are equipped, okay? to be able to make that, and, and we should be able to expect them to do that. Now, so uh, I've done that, or I've attempted to do that. We'll, we'll see how close I am here with everything in the game, everything offensively in the game. Um, now, before I forget it, and we can come back to this, Dan, uh, but I want the coaches to hear this, that uh, – Stages is, is going to be released to them and to the players in stages. In other words, uh, right now I've got only offensive basketball, okay? And even that, I, Dan, we may be releasing and uh, with, uh, without stage seven. It may come a week or two after it's released. Uh, that's how much, uh, uh, how much material <laughs> we've got, I've got to edit. Um, but after that is going to come speed, agility, quickness, because there's an athletic side to becoming a, a, a basketball player that we should expect at every stage. Example, you know, how can I expect a kid to do a hop back three if they can't do that without the ball? I mean, physically, they've got to be able to launch off of one foot and land on two and change directions and keep balance, et cetera, et cetera. So our speed, agility, quickness, strength test have got to match what we're expecting from them on the basketball side. And following that will be the defensive tests that are going to come, that, that will be in each and every stage, okay? Along with all that is the language that goes with it so that coaches will be able to communicate with players. And uh, look, I, I taught math for 20 years. 
at the beginning of every chapter, new chapter, you know what came first? New vocabulary. You cannot move on to a bigger idea, a bigger uh, thought, concept, until you change and increase your vocabulary. You have to. So in these tests, um, the vocabulary of the concepts of drawing and kicking and uh, closing out and killing closeouts and sweeping and re-sweeping and just, just all of the coach talk that all of us kind of uh, uh, would like for our players to know. The player's going to be picking this up picking this up in the test. Okay, let me stop there because I'll I'll ramble on. I'll ramble on all night about um, what makes stages different, I think, than just a, uh, a training program, although it is going to be a great training program. Well, and I think you made a really key point, just, just so everyone's you know, clear and understands. The, the size and the scope of this is, is quite daunting. So, you know, when, when we say we're releasing it in phases, um, just the offensive part that Rick's talking about, ignition and then stages one through seven, there's over, correct me if I'm wrong, like 520 different tests that sit inside of there, uh, plus all the technology behind it to build it out. So, uh, and there's all this communication, you know, pieces back and forth with the coach and the players so that the coach can manage the development of their team. Um, and so it, it is so unbelievably big. And there was just no way that Rick and I could get through everything that we've concepted for stages in just about 14 months. So we will, we will be spending what we think is probably the next 10 to 12 months uh, releasing portions of stages, which, which not only includes content and tests, but also includes technology. We've got really, really big plans for stages. Uh, and ultimately, we would, we would love to see stages used across the world. Uh, for a platform that coaches can use to train and manage their entire team's development without you having to be the personal trainer for every single one of your players, because that's just not possible. So what we want to be able to do is to provide a digital training tool for every single one of your players that has a unified language, it has a full platform that allows you to manage that uh, without sucking up all of your time. And at the same time, giving you the ability to quickly assess players to quickly get a snapshot of your team to understand their skill level. Uh, there is all these things behind it that we'll get into. So uh, Rick, real quick, can you walk us through, I want to get to exactly how coaches are going to use this in some strategic ways. But first, I, I want to have everybody understand a little bit more about the stages. Can you give us a brief walk through ignition through stage seven? What are some of the, the key differences? What are players learning that's different between stage one and two or two and five? Okay, that, that might take a long time, too much more time than we got tonight, uh, Dan, but I, I, can, I can maybe hit kind of the highlights. Um, yeah. um, uh, for, well, first of all, before I answer that directly, um, um, I wanted something that would cut to the competitive nature of players, okay? That uh, as soon as you rank them, as soon as you give them a number that they can compare themselves to, okay? Look, they're familiar with this in video games. They know that they have to master this, 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 and this before they can go on to the next level, okay? So they're already familiar with doing that. Um, uh, so I wanted to kind of uh, uh, rec recruit that competitive desire. And uh, uh, I just wanted a player to be able to hop in, begin, and go. And let's just see how far you can go through these stages. Uh, and, uh, and it will be self-diagnostic as they go through, okay? Because there's going to come a test where they can't pass. Guess what? They, you've just answered, the moment they get to a test, they can't pass. We've just answered the question, what do I need to work on, coach? Okay, well, there it is. And it's not some broad concept, it's right there. 
there it is. I coach, I can't pass this, that's this, that's this, that's it. Great. Now we know, now we know what you need to work on. Okay. So, so let me answer your, your question a little more directly there. Um, uh, broadly, very, very broadly. Of course, it starts out with uh, uh, mostly skills, what you can do um, with the ball. Okay, so you're talking about stage one um, ignition. Look, ignition is a, is simply a, a stage where I just want to see if a kid's interested. Are you interested? Come on, try. We've got like nine little tests here, you know. We'll probably have, to, as soon as there's speed, agility, quickness, we'll probably have 10 tests, okay. Hop in, see if you like to compete, see if you like to get better. Do you like this? If you do, great. You pass those and hop right into stage one. So stage one, mostly, you know, uh, ball handling, shooting, uh, building your one-on-one -on -one base. Uh, 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 that type of thing. Well, then when you go, let's say stage two, I begin to introduce uh, uh, finishing, you know, besides just the standard layup. Uh, what are the other ways to finish when you do get to the rim? Okay. Um, stage two, uh, you know, in stage one, you're talking about shooting in a hop, as an example. Okay. Uh, landing on two. Okay. Uh, the layups are landing on two feet, you know, in stage one, that type of thing. Uh, stage two, we start introducing, you know, one, two footwork. And why? Why do you have it? Why do you need to be able to use it versus, say, a hop? Okay, what's the difference between shooting as quick as you can off the dribble versus um, creating space between you and a defender where you launch and land on two? Okay, uh, well, um, uh, this kind of uh, progression goes on to three and into stage three but by, by the time you get to stage three there are some uh thing uh, you begin to engage other players let's just put this up. again big bird's eye view here okay uh uh, uh much of basketball training stops with what you can and cannot do with the ball okay well there's there's four other players on the floor. Actually, there's nine other players on the floor. Five of the defenders, your defender, and four, four other offensive teammates. And so, uh, I, you know, we st I start introducing uh, dribble penetration where you're drawing defense and you're having to read, either be the player with the ball and have a teammate to pitch to or not. I, and then there's there's the the flip side of that. You're the player without the ball. What do you do? Where's the best place to go? How do you get shot ready? Depending on the dribble penetration, depending on how the defender is drawn is drawn. Okay, um, that eventually, if if we were just kind of staying in that category, that eventually leads it uh, leads into um, uh, all the different triggers for for dribble penetration okay where are the best places and best situations to dribble penetrate uh what are the reads that type of thing um uh let's see uh you know i just sent you uh stage four dan right and in stage four uh setting screens and the actions that follow, uh, because I, I think s setting screens is a scoring opportunity for the player who sets screens. Well, first of all, we've got to start introducing all of the, the screens away from the ball, where you don't have the ball. Uh, and those are introduced in stages. We start with some simple ones, and then we, we build our way up into stage seven. Stage seven is heavy heavy in, in setting screens. And it should be. It should be. You're, you're, 
you're probably playing against a little more sophisticated defense. And so in the back of my mind as I'm building this, I'm seeing uh, the flip side of offense, that, that defense is progressing as well. Well, what, what does it take to beat defense? I mean, uh, can you beat yours? Great. Well, now you've got to beat – there's four others, okay? And what about when you can't? Well, now you are moving without the ball, and can you? Well, if so, then uh, what screens are available? Well, that, that depends on what action you're taking. So eventually this becomes full-blown into setting every possible screen that you can and learning the, the counter move to what your cutter and the defense does. Okay. Now, now I'm not talking about running any particular system. Okay. I'm saying if you're running a set play, if you're running anybody's system, there are certain principles that, that uh, I should expect you, a player, to be able to do. Okay. Um, uh, you set a screen for a teammate. The teammate cuts to the basket. Should you cut to the basket or should you go in the opposite direction of your cutter? Okay. Uh, th th these are just uh, principles and thoughts about uh, things to teach players um, uh, that you get into pretty heavy by stage six, but it starts getting introduced in stage four. And then stage five gets bigger. Now, while we're while we're talking about screens, I don't introduce ball screens. I think it's stage six where I introduce ball screens. Okay, and then stage seven, of course, uh, is so, you know very heavy, very heavy in ball screens. Now, let me back up a moment. Some of the original categories, some of the original things that that I'm testing in the in stages one, two, three, even four, they end, some of them end in stage four and stage five. They're just, there's, there's, you're done with them, okay? Uh, so they don't go, some of these categories don't go all the way through uh, stage uh, seven, all right? Um, and, uh, now, I know that that probably doesn't answer that big bird's eye view of, uh, of what separates one stage from another. Uh, but I would say probably somewhere there in three and four, you'll definitely see a shift, you know. There's a lot of stuff without the ball. There's the ability to get open and attack in a small space. Um, uh, I, I'll use post play as an example. Uh, post play isn't even introduced uh, as a category until I want to say stage three. Again, I'd have to look at my notes because, like Dan said, there's 550 something tests so far. Uh, uh, but 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 the time, uh, you know. So first of all, post play is introduced is just you know uh, how to catch and. Uh, uh, establish a position and get open with your back to the basket for all players, okay? Um, and how to then begin to, to, to have a go-to move and a counter move. But then by the time you get to stage seven, we're talking about leg whip, swim moves, how to seal uh, defenders out when they're fronting you, um, uh, how to play on the porch, how to establish why you would establish a pro stance in the porch versus – either posting up in the lane or popping to the perimeter. Uh, this gets pretty involved. And wh while I'm uh, thinking about it, and I'll turn this back over to you, Dan, but while I'm thinking about it, I want to make sure the coaches hear this, especially the group that's listening tonight. I fully expect you to disagree with me on some of these tests and in what stages they're, they're in. I'm expecting stages to be as organic as the read and react offense was and is. It still changes. 
it it has changed based on the feedback that I've gotten from the coaching community. And this is what's held me back from doing this is like, come on, I, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I can actually come up with, you know, all the stages that it takes and develop an entire player from, and you know something, probably not, but that gun, I'm going to do it. And then, We'll work it out as a community based on your feedback. Hey, we'll be adding, subtracting, moving tests until we get this thing exactly where we want it, where it will, uh, uh, where when, when you say, when a player says to you or you find out in, in, in the technology that uh, one of your players has passed stage five, you're going to know exactly what to expect from that player. And, and you'll have the same vocabulary, the same uh, expectations, um, uh, that, that type of thing. So um, uh, I, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I've got it completely 100% solved. But, man, Dan, it's a great first step. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. So one of one of the things, just just to kind of sum a lot of that up. Yeah. When Rick began to uh, to develop this, we were actually down in Texas together. We were, we were doing a planning meeting for stages, and uh, we're sitting in our in our hotel. And I just said to Rick, I said, "Hey, so how far are you on stages?" And you know, because we had talked about stage seven, our final stage for the moment, at least, being ready to go on to the next level. And Rick said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. And I said, what do you mean you're finished? And he pulls out of his bag a binder about this thick. And I looked through it, and it was every task for every stage strategically thought out. And they build upon each other. So, so just to be really clear and sum up, what, what you've got is you've got a, at least what you consider stage one for us, phase one for stages. Phase one. From beginner to ready to go into college, step by step, stage by stage. And it's built out strategically and systematically. If there's a certain skill that's required in stage six, you actually strip that skill back to say, well, what would an athlete have to know before to even accomplish this skill? And that skill goes into stage five and four and three. That's right, and Dan. That, I, I work backwards. Yep. The, 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 I, I tried it the other way and it just didn't work. You're exactly right. Start with with uh, wh where the bar is held and then start working backwards. Thank you. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, so so let me address real quick some of the we, – we had a, a little question around some of the, the vocabulary and some of the language. So uh, some, of that's, some of that's to come because it's uh, – you, you'll kind of learn it in the system as we go, but – uh, I think a lot of that summed up in, if you think about the martial arts belt system, you know, if, we were, if we were all in uh, karate, let's say, when we say green belt, we all have a common understanding of, of about where that, that athlete is, right? Um, now, it doesn't mean that, that they can't, you know, compete against a higher level belt. It just means that we know about what level they accomplished. And so that's a little bit about what we're talking about in the vocabulary is as a coaching staff or with you and a player or with you and parents uh, to be able to use some of that common language and understanding you know imagine imagine just quickly turning to uh, one of your coaches in a game and saying that was that was level three shooting right you're like yeah i recognize that that's level three um, and imagine being able to do that for all of these different skills or being able to quickly look at a player and have a common understanding of they're displaying, you know, level four, stage four characteristics. Uh, so that what we're anticipating is that this can, can be used potentially as, as part of a common language uh, to really boil down some of the complexity that happens in the game. Because right now, it's very abstract, right? Like, Rick, when, when coaches talk about a player, it has to be done over the course of paragraphs of words. And you don't have the same commonality of understanding you know, when you even discuss, well, what's, what's a good ball handler? Um, it, it's very abstract, and it takes a while to really dig down and discuss. Uh, so we're hoping some of this boils that back and, and you know, gives it a little bit more of a common language 
so that you can understand, yeah, these, these things sit inside of stage three, I recognize those, and then your entire coaching staff can recognize those. And a player also recognizes they're a stage three ball handler, and they also know what it means to move forward to become a stage four ball handler. So it gives you clarity, the player clarity, hopefully the parents clarity. Um, so speaking of, Rick, let's get into some of the specifics of how a coach can use the system, right? Uh, so we're starting to frame up a little bit about you know the, some of the background, uh, what's gone into it, and uh, and starting to frame up some of the stages. We're going to get into showing you a little bit of the technology. I think that's going to make it a little more clear about what you can do with it. Uh, but Rick, talk to me, talk to me a little bit about uh, for a coach, what how can they use this directly to improve their team? Well. Um... Um, if I were coaching, here's, here's how I would probably answer that. If I were coaching, um, uh, I would, I would take this system and, uh, I'd explain it to my players and say, look, um, uh, all of you have, you know, I've got a pretty good idea of, of all of you, you know, where you are and your skills and that type of thing. But I, I also know that all of you have holes in your game, okay? Um, and um, since I'm not there, since I can't be there to train each one of you personally, we now have a system called Stages that I want you to enter, and, it's, and uh, uh, you're going to be able to follow the test and um, uh, do them on your own without someone there like me standing over you. And, um, um, and you're going to progress at your own speed, okay? Um, and when you, you know, I'd, I'd first give them just a basic understanding of it, that, look, some of you are going to rip through you know, there's 24 tests, I think, in stage one, and then it jumps to, uh, gee whiz, I don't know, but it's it's graded on up. You know, there's 115 or something like that in stage seven. So they just, you know, they, they uh, ratchet up in each stage because what you're supposed to learn uh, uh, as a player gets wider, uh, broader, as you as you grow in the game so uh, um, regardless of where I'm at whether it's in the off season or it's uh, the beginning of the season like it is right now I would say look uh, uh, I want you to start training uh, simply to get better there's no there's no need to uh, uh, to complicate this this is meant to uh, train you up in the game, all right? Now, once they get started uh, uh, and, and they get familiar with how easy it, this is to do on their own, then I'm going to introduce it into my practice because every, every uh, coach uh, has a section in their practice that's uh, centered around player development. And you have to plan that, and you have to come up with the drills, and uh, it takes a good chunk of your time. Uh, in some bigger chunks than others, depending on what level you coach. Uh, stages would allow a coach to just schedule the time in practice. Let's say you have an hour and a half practice. Uh, I would take, I, Let's say, and I'm just making this up. Let's say you take 30 minutes. One third of your practice is dedicated to developing your players. Okay, and once that's done, you can put it behind you. Focus only on your offense, defense, you know, team stuff. Okay. Well, during that 30 minutes, uh, I would be saying, players, this is this is time for stages. Pull out your phones, get on with your tests. And I'm myself and the coaching staff, we're going to walk around and help and see and, you know, uh, help where we can help. But this would be a uh, 30 minutes of indiv an individualized instruction for every player. You don't have to waste time 
explaining a drill, setting up a drill, stand, players standing in line, that kind of thing. Players can just get to work on exactly what they need to be working on. What are you going to be working on? The test that you haven't been able to pass yet. Okay? So let's say you're in stage two. You're at test number 33. And uh, you just passed 33. What do you do? You go on to 34. This isn't rocket science, okay? And if you fail 34, uh, and, and by the way, this is a good chance to explain a test. And I'd love, Dan, to be able to show one, maybe screen share one or two. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, got them, I've got them on my desktop here because uh, they're very short. You know, most of them, it only takes – a couple of minutes to explain it and show a, a couple of sample clips. And, uh, but I, I, want, I have a thought for you. Let's say the test says you have to make eight out of 10 of these shots, okay, of, with this particular action. And this is gonna make sense when I show you a couple of tests, okay? <clears throat> the question is, how long will it take about how many times will they have to try it and rep it to make eight out of 10? That's where the real value of this comes. It's not that they, they, it's not the eight out of 10 that does it. It's how many reps it took them. They try, oh, well, first they got four out of 10. Okay, I got to do this again, you know? And so now they get five out of 10. Now they get three out of ten. Now they keep right. Now they get some instructions from you, and uh, 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 it's maybe some pointers and that type of thing. And now they, now they uh, get seven out of ten. Now they fall back and they got six. I don't know. I have no idea how many it takes, but I, I, I do know this: for some players, they're going to be. They won't even realize that they've put up 150 shots working on a particular action before they can actually pass. Isn't, isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you talk about when you're in your training? Look, we got to get the reps in if you're going to grow and acquire this particular skill. Well, look, if they can pass the test right away, I'm ready for them to go on, okay? If they can't, they keep trying and trying and trying. And there's your reps. I would spend – I would have a stages section in my practice. And then, of course, when, when season's over, there's no question about what they should be doing. Okay? And to maybe complete that circle, I would be holding camps in the summer. I'd hold stage three camps, stage four camps, stage five camps. Look, you come to this camp, we're going to make sure our, our goal is for you to pass stage three. You know? So all those stage two players that have failed in stage three, they're coming to that particular camp and we're going to we're, our goal is to teach to the test teach to the test um, and uh, eventually how I would wind up using it in my program a pretty full-blown use of it would be look uh, well you know I was at a school where I hired everyone from all the coaches from you know sixth grade to to my assistants at the varsity. And so I was, you know, like most coaches, I'm responsible for the entire program. I want, I want, after all my players that have gone through the, uh, gone through stages, let's say my players are, they fall in stage four and five. My starters, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the players that make the varsity, four and five, okay? Let's say that my JV are stage three and four, okay? And so forth and so on down, down the line, okay? Now there is no question for parents and players. Look, you want to make the varsity? You want to, wait a minute, you want a shot at making the varsity? Because this isn't, it's not, uh, you know, I, I've still got to approve you. But there's no, there's, no, uh, there's no way you're going to make the varsity team being a stage two when the players that are on my team have proven that they're stage four and stage five. So now it's right out in front of every player 
every age, even though we're not using age, every grade level. Look, you 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 want to make the eighth grade team? Yeah. All all the kids who make our eighth grade team have passed age two. Now players know exactly what they've got to do to get to make particular teams and that type of thing. Look, I think this could be boiled down even to starters. Okay. My starters are five and six, stage five and six. Uh, now I don't have to use coach speak. I don't have to have as many meetings and that type of thing. Uh, their development as a player is laid out before them, and I can see it in my software. I can see it on my, my computer when they pass tests. I'm going to leave that to you. Uh, I don't know if that uh, completely answers how I would uh, how I would use it as a coach, but it gives you an idea of where I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so really, coaches are going to have a tool that is that is going to be able to train all of their players at once, but they're just managing the development of the players, right? That's right. The way that I like to think about this is, you know. Imagine if your team had a personal trainer and that personal trainer was full time. That personal trainer worked with every single player on your team. And they also worked with your, your up and coming players as well, right? And at any time you could call up that personal trainer and you could say, hey, how's, how's Susan doing or how's Johnny doing, right? And that personal trainer would give you a rundown. Here's how they're doing. This is exactly where they're at. This is what, they're, you know, what they've completed. And this is what they're working on. This is the type of athlete that they are. If you really think about it, that's kind of NBA level stuff, right? NBA coaches, they've got an entire staff of trainers who are working with all of the players and giving feedback to the coaches about how the players are doing in many different areas, right? And so that's really what we're trying to provide is the full system, the technology for coaches to be able to manage their team. And at the core of this, really, really what we got down to was what if we could make every player on the team 10% better, just 10%, right? What kind of difference would that make? So we began to research the percentage of games that are lost by a certain number of points. And what we, what we found is that in theory, right, just in theory, if you could make 10, your players 10% better, could you score 10% more points? Well, what we found was that you could drastically change your win-loss record by doing that. And I think we're, it's, it's safe to say, right, if, if I took any of you coaches right now, right, any of us, and I took the 10 best players in the country and I put them on your team, you'd probably win the championship in your division, right? Uh, but we can't do that. But what we can do, we think, is give a system that allows the players to systematically develop themselves. And they're self-selecting, they're self-testing. So they're, they're telling themselves, what they need to work on next. And so what if we could just give a coach a tool that allows their entire team to get 10% better without them having to be there with every single player every single day, trying to assess and build a training plan for that player, right? So that's really where Stages is going. And, uh, and we couldn't be more excited uh, to, to really hear how you use that. And, and that's what would be exciting is, is we talked about a lot of different ways that coaches can use this, even, even down to the potential of strategic, right? Uh, when can you quickly assess the other team and a player on the other team and recognize that they're at stage four defense? Sure, they're a stage six shooter, but they're out they're, they're showing stage, stage three or stage four defensive tactics. We know how to exploit that because we know exactly what they're missing because it's built into our language, right? And same thing for assessing your own team, right? Um, I think we're going to find coaches are going to be start to, because all of you are geniuses and you're strategic geniuses. It's, it's why you do what you do. It's built into you as a coach, right? I think we're going to start to see coaches find systems and strategies that combine a, oh, I need a stage uh, five shooter with a stage uh, four defensive player over here, but that defensive player has you know, stage six ball handling skills. And it's almost like the ingredients of building a team. I think we're going to find that from you. And that, that's really exciting is to see how you use this. Yeah, so, I, I, Dan, go ahead. Dan, 
the great point, and, and I, I want to make sure uh, I just get this thought out, that I think it's going to change the strategies that coaches come up with. Because what if most of the holes that are in your players' games were filled? What if they were more complete players? What if you were getting something that you could, uh, as a whole, rely on not just one kid that can do this and another kid that can do this part of the game, but what if your entire team was all pretty much on the same page uh, uh, skill-wise? Okay, now they'll never – some will be, always be better than others, of course, okay? but. I think it will change what, what you just mentioned, Dan. I think it will change their strategies, um, the types of defenses, uh, how they play offense, uh, how they even um, coach the game in, in, in terms of do I need to micromanage this as much and control every action of every set and everything that we do uh, as much. I, I just I still think we're playing a truncated version of this game. And the reason it's truncated is not the coaches. It is the skill levels and lack of them in our players. And I'd love to solve that problem. Hey, Dan, you, when, tell me when you think I could share. I'd, I'd love for them to see, say, three tests in a row. Yeah, how about, how about I show it to them? Let me get into the system. Okay. And uh, if, if you want to give me some direction on if you I do. want to show them, I'm happy to jump in and I'll do a screen share real quick. Oh, excellent. Let me, let me tee it up a little bit, uh, discuss a little bit of the technology because I really want them to understand where this is going, how they're actually going to be using it on a day to day basis. Uh, yeah. And then we'll jump in. Let's see. I'm, I've got three in stage four. And so if you can remember, stage four tests 55, 56, 57. Perfect. Okay. Let's start pitch five. So let's let's transition over. I, I want to start to walk you through a little bit of the technology. Now, full disclosure, okay? Uh, we are heavily, heavily at work finishing the technology, getting the product fully ready. So uh, what you see is partially ready, and uh, you cannot hold us to this. Please do not beat us up over it. We're doing you a favor, hopefully, in showing it to you. Uh, but I, I do want to get in and start showing a lot of it to you so you can start to understand how to use this. So uh, in just a second, I'm going to share my screen with you here. Okay, Rick, can you confirm? You can see that there? Yes. Perfect, okay. What you can see right here, this is the initial screen that all players will be dropped down to. Uh, by the way, we are in development right now for our mobile app. So there's going to be uh, an iPhone and an Android app that players are going to be able to download. Uh, really, our concept for this, because you know, we're a mobile generation now, uh, especially all of your players, right? Uh, they've been holding mobile phones since they were a, a year old. And so we knew that we had to be able to give them a, a full training system on their phone so that whether they're at home, on the court, anywhere, uh, they can pull this out and, uh, and they can begin to continue to walk through their training all year round. So what you'll see, we've got ignition through stage seven, and uh, you can see, you know, there's, there's steps in here, right? So, you know, you've got 13 steps. These steps are tests. And so athletes will be completing. They'll be able to see visually where they are in each stage here. And you can see, you know, ignition has 13 has stage one has 33, stage two jumps up to 67. Stage three is 62. Uh, stage four has 76. Uh, Rick is working on stages five, six, and seven right now. But uh, so let me let me just jump in real quick. Rick, you said in stage four, uh, 55, 56, 57. Yeah. Okay. So you can see inside of stage four, we have all of the categories of skills broken down here. Okay. This allows an athlete to, to really easily understand where they're at and what they want to work through at the time. And they can go through these in, in any order that they want, right? So, you know, they can, they can decide, I want to work on you know, shooting today or I want to work on finishing today. 
And if they get stuck in one area, no problem. They can just move on to another area. And really some of what we, just, what we, what we attempted to build in here was a little bit of gamification. And what I mean by that is probably all of your players play video games. And in the technology world, there's very strategic ways that you keep a player engaged with the system. And so we have been working on trying to build this almost like a video game. And players love to compete against themselves, they love to compete against others, and they love to get points and, and level up in video games. So we've really begun to architect this like a video game. So if you get stuck on you know, shooting, you can just move over to dribble. So uh, under here, you can see all the skills. So on one, in one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you've got test 19 through 26 that sit inside of one-on-one. -on -one. So Rick, yours are gonna be getting open? Yep. Five? Yep. Okay, so players will pop this open. Let me just play that video there. Pick six cash require you to get open and score in a very small space on the wing. So the situation is that you can't cut to the basket. Maybe the post is occupied. Maybe the whole lane's occupied. You've got to get open in a small space. So you're being pressured. You walk your defender with both arms up to show the referee that, look, you're not, you're not the one initiating this contact. Uh, you don't want any offensive foul on you. And as you go across the three-point line, you plant your left foot in the center of your defender's feet and then you reverse pivot. Now, this is called a leg whip. You, you're gonna try to get them on your butt. That's usually what a leg whip does, but out of the perimeter, you're probably not. But the leg whip, that spin, will allow you to establish a pro stance. Think about forming a T frame. T in terms of the line of your shoulders and the line of your defender's shoulders. Now you've got an arm bar, now you've got a target hand, and your, your partner's gonna throw the pass to your target hand, and that's gonna allow you to reverse pivot, read this space, if there's space, you're gonna quick draw for a shot. And in this test, there is gonna be space, and you're gonna quick draw for the shot. Make a minimum of five out of 10 shots to pass the test. Okay, you want me to move on to 56, Rick? Yes, I just want them to see how I put this together. Go ahead. you're getting open the same way with a leg whip so after the leg whip and you get into your pro stance and the pass is thrown to your outside hand your defender is going to stop that shot they're going to raise that hand they're going to close out on you get that hand up to stop that quick draw you're going to catch and reverse pivot and that right foot's not even going to touch the ground you're going to try to sweep and open step. You won't get far, but there's no need for that foot to touch the ground and then touch it again. Just uh, reverse pivot and step, open step, and dribble and go right, okay? You're going to finish 
in a two foot power layup. I need 10 out of 10 made layups. And one more, Dan. That's as far as we'll go. There's, there's three others there, but I just want the coaches to see the progression. open the same way you're going to walk your defender down leg whip get into your pro stance extend your target hand catch this pass reverse pivot and fake the sweep or you know think about you're going to try to sweep every time they take away your shot okay so when you try this sweep your right foot's going to touch the ground if they play the baseline sweep okay and when your foot touches that ground and your defender shifts to stop your, your baseline drive, you're going to re-sweep and cross-step that right foot to the middle. And you're going to go with your uh, left hand dribbling to the middle. But we're going to add something here. We're going to pretend that you encounter a help defender, and you're going to have to do a sweep over with your left hand, land on the right side, go up for your uh, right-handed power shot off of two feet. I need 10 out of 10 made layups. All right, so Rick, here, yep. here's a question for you on that, right? Yeah. Uh, so what I heard in there was a lot of terminology, right? So you're talking about terminology and footwork and all this, right? So we, we jumped right into stage four. Yep. The terminology that you talked about in that video, right? That'd be a lot for, for an athlete just starting from scratch, from a lot of, for a lot of athletes. Right. But you have already worked backwards. They've already encountered you the small steps that make up that move so that when you say that terminology, they're already ready, right? Exactly. That, and that's why I wanted to start there in test four, Dan. Great, great point. Is example, the sweep over on that third test, that sweep over finish, changing hands, changing directions, landing on two, avoiding a help defender. We've already been through – Wow, I don't, I don't know how many tests on this. In other words, uh, the player, before ever getting to stage four, has uh, – pen and it was in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, category, Dan. It was, in, it was not in the getting open category. It was in the one-on-one -on -one category in a stage two or stage three. The player is driving with their defender on their hip. The defender – uh, makes it in front of them, and there's uh, there is just enough space to sweep over and change directions and not take a charge. So we've been through those tests, and then we did it with a help defender. The partner was on the weak side of the lane. They're driving the lane. Here comes the help defender. You've got to change direction. There is room in the lane if you can change direction. So you've got to spank the baby. Another term that we've already introduced in other stages, spank the baby, change directions. They know which foot to launch off of. The quick draw shot was, gee whiz, the reverse pivot quick draw, I, I can't remember which stage. I'd have to go back and look, but you're right. It's in one, two, or three. Uh, the sweep and the re-sweep has already also been covered in uh, pressure. Yeah, pressure tactics of one-on-one -on -one in a lower stage. So 
they're putting all this stuff together uh, as you go up in stages. But not only that, I just wanted the coaches to see that the tests were progressive in terms of move and counter move. And uh, uh, to answer one of the questions in the chat, yeah, the higher you go, you're going to you're going to wind up needing a partner, and then you're going to wind up needing three people because you maybe you need a passer and a defensive partner and that type of thing. But what this means is your teammates are going to have to pick someone that's roughly in the same stage and work together on taking this. Test. This is good. This is a really good dynamic to have going on on your team. Definitely. So Scott just asked a really great question in the chat. Uh, he, he asked, um, how do we know to use proper footwork each time? You know, and he said, I guess I'd be doing game plan. So I want to show you coaches a little bit about how this is going to work because we've talked about your ability to be able to manage your team's development. And uh, some, of this, some of this we're going to be working through because what we want to be able to hear from, from you is, how do you best want to manage your team? And we're hoping to be able to open this up so you can decide uh, at some point how you want to manage your team, how hands-on you want to be. But let me just jump in real quick here. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. And I want to show you a little bit about uh, how this is going to work. So here's stage three. And if we get into dribbling, and I show you strength and equality of hands. So this is the te first test inside of stage three. Now, or in, uh, inside of stage one, sorry. So Rick, why don't, why don't we go ahead and play a little bit of this for them? It's a longer video because there's, there's a little more teaching that's in here. Sure. But I feel like it might be really good for them after they've seen stage four to see a little bit uh, what a stage one looks like, unless you have a better example. Uh, of a test that you can think of that would show that that difference. Can you focus on that? Mm -hmm. This one work? Okay. Hey, well, uh, Dan. Hey, yeah. Dan. Uh, show me the title of test two. I mean, uh, no, no, no. Let's see. There's twelve. Show me uh, the titles again here in test one. Yeah, here. Oh, over here. Yep, we've got. Uh, in dribbling. No, I'm sorry. In dribbling. Oh. Strength and quality of hands, ultimate pattern, ultimate pattern plus crossover. Uh, ultimate pattern uh, crossover. Show them that one. Okay. If you don't mind. I think that would do what you want. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I just, I think it'd be great for them to see. Okay. Now we're going to add a crossover to the same pattern. Control dribble, crossover to the speed dribble, crossover again, power to the wing, reverse dribble, crossover attack, and then crossover again at the free throw line and stick the landing leg up. Switch to your left hand and continue. Passing the test requires four trips without mistakes and four made layups. All right, so let me, let me show you, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding of how this is building. That's, that was quite a bit more simple than what you saw in stage four, as it should be because it's stage one. So just so you understand, what we're working through right now is a way for you to manage your team's development. And one of Rick's big goals in this, and we, I know we talked about so many different ways we could attack stages. And I think one of the things that stayed true the entire time was Rick continued to say, it has to be objective. It has to be testable. And so then we began to talk about, well, you know, how do, how do we actually know that the player's doing what they're supposed to be doing? 
So what we've built in here is, uh, and I should say what we're building in because we're at the end stages of our, of our technology build for this, but it's the ability for a player to video their test and upload it. And once that test has been uploaded, it goes to you as a coach and, and, or, to, and or to your coaching staff. And from there, you can watch the video really quickly and improve it or not. And, uh, and that way, if you see something in that video, let's say, let's say technically speaking, right? The athlete did uh, the ultimate pattern and crossover that we just saw. And, but you're looking at their footwork that just looks really, really poor. Well, you could say, no, I'm, I'm not gonna approve that. I wanna see some footwork be better. There's something specific that I see in there that I'm just not ready to pass you. Um, we want you to have that, that power and that control. Some of what we'd love to hear from you and some of what we're looking at building into the system uh, at some point in the, in the near future, in the next 12 months, would be some flexibility in that because you might say, well, I don't, I don't even wanna look at any of my players' tests. Maybe I coach a high level varsity team. I don't want to look at any of my players' tests until we start getting into stage three because I just don't want to take the time for it. I'm pretty sure all my players can confidently pass, you know, stages, you know, ignition one and two. But getting into stage three, I want to be able to see every one of their tests and prove or deny them. Um, so we, we want to be able to work on some flexibility, and that's where we would love to hear from you what your feedback is on how you'd like to manage the team because we'd like to ultimately just build out the technology the best that we can so that it serves you uh, the best. So uh, really in, in short for the technology, where, where we're gonna be at today is players are gonna have a mobile app that they can use on iPhone or Android. They can go through all of the tests themselves and, uh, and then they can upload their tests that go to the coach or the coaching staff and then the coaching staff can approve them. And that also just gives you insight into how hard your players are working, what stage you know, they're at, what skills they're specifically working at. Hopefully at some point, this is gonna allow us to partner the coach with the player to, you know, a lot of times you recognize the things in their game and you might look at that player and say, hey, what, what are you look, working at right now in stages? Which hopefully you already know because you've been getting the tests, right? Uh, but, you know, they said, I've been working on, I've been working on shooting. You said, look, I, I don't want you to work on shooting. I really want you to come over here and I actually want you to work on finishing. I feel like that's what we really need to work on next. What's, you know, I, and you, you know what stage they're at, right? And so just say, go, go work on your next finishing throws. And by the way, you actually know what's coming up in finishing for them. Sorry, I got to go I'll turn the light on here. It just went off on me, guys. <laughs> There we go. It's motion, it's motion control. Uh, go ahead, Rick. No, I said unshare your screen because right now you're in a thumbnail for me. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, got it. There you go. Good. Good. You, got, hey, you guys didn't see that. My, the light just went off in this room. Um, so I'll just uh, tell myself that's what happened. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's ultimately what, what we want to provide to you as a way for you to partner with the player so you can develop your entire team uh, and, and in a simple, effective system that walks them through step-by-step, stage-by-stage for exactly where they're at. Uh, and then also, you know, we would love to be able to ultimately, Rick and I were just talking about this today, tie the parents into this. You know, imagine if the parents are, are getting into uh, the game with you and if they're seeing their, their kids pass through the stages, they know where their kid is too. They know what their kid needs to work on next. It's just clear to everybody. Uh, so we're super excited to see how this is, this is all gonna work. Uh, Scott, the question you just posted, players don't have to go in the exact order of tests within a stage. No, they do not. They can uh, freeform choose how they wanna go through the tests. A lot of players may just choose whatever's most fun to them or whatever they're, they're good at first, and they'll be able to go through that. Um, the tests are only numbered so that it helps, uh, it helps us quickly diagnose and talk about a test. So you may, you may just quickly know, you know, be able to tell a player instead of saying, go to, you know, stage three, you know, category ball handling, test name this. You just say, hey, look, stage three, test 43. And they can just jump there really quickly. But they can, they can go through those uh, any, any way that they want. So... Um, so let me talk a little bit about some of the things that are coming for us with stages. 
Rick and I, we have really, really big plans. And like I said, we're pretty much dedicating our next year, maybe year plus, to developing out stages, both from the, the content side, uh, the training side, and the technology side of things. Um, and so, so Rick, one of the things that's coming, right? When a player, so right now, right now you've got all the tests and the tests are very comprehensive on the offensive side, right? Uh, one of our next stages, uh, phases of stages is the speed, agility, quickness, right? Bringing in the athletic side of things. We're also going to be working on the mental skills portion, right? Um, as, a, as a key component of the game. And, and that one, that one's something that we're gonna be working with industry experts on to develop. Uh, but that one's actually going to be a little bit more test-based. So the app is going to contain uh, quizzes and, and, and test questions um, so, so that they can go through and pass. But it really gets the athletes thinking about the mental game. You know, how do they, how do they work through uh, missing, missing a free throw, missing two free throws? How do they work through missing three three-pointers in a row, right? Uh, how, how do we begin to develop their composure? So a little bit of more of the intangibles of the game uh, are, are going to happen in there. And so, so Rick, the next big piece, right? So once we get there, okay, the next big piece, and this was one of my big questions as we began developing this, <coughs> was let's say a player gets to stage four and they, they get into a, a ball handling, you know, a, a dribbling test and they fail that test, right? So they've reached a level at which they, they, re they recognize I'm stage four, but I failed this test. What do they do next, right? So what's the next big piece that's coming for stages that is gonna be probably bigger than the original phase of stages? Oh, you want me to answer that? Or do you want to answer? <laughs> uh, well, that, that is the most exciting part. And it could be the big, well, I know it will be the biggest part content-wise is uh, we want the player to be able to, okay, they, they failed the test, maybe they tried it, a couple of three times and and they just can't okay to be able to click on the training button and it take them to a library of workouts uh teaching um uh, uh just a, a a wide variety of of um well workouts is best i can say best best way i can say it that will develop what they need in order to go back and take that test. And uh, I mean, uh, I, I just, um, I have so many ideas there. I just almost can't wait to get started there. Because yeah, I, I saw a, someone in the chat saying, uh, okay, so are you just gonna continue to test and test and retest if they, if they, um, if they fail something? Well, you know, there is a certain degree of truthfulness to that. Some things are only gained by repetition, okay? But, but there's quite a bit of the game that uh, the reason that they're failing is some, some type of uh, uh, technical aspect or mechanical aspect, footwork aspect. I just, just think, I'll leave you with this. Uh, the test is uh, the test that we just showed, Dan. Uh, the um, leg whip, catch, reverse pivot, uh, quick draw. Your weight is going backwards. This is a more difficult shot than ordinary shots, okay? Because you got your weight going backward with a reverse pivot. Um, uh, a player fails that. Um, there's there's a lot going on there mechanically it may be it may his solution or her solution may fall in a speed agility quickness strength a balance uh, a category uh, that may be where their training button takes them okay that they cannot perform that action and go up uh, balanced uh, it, it that really doesn't have anything to do with shooting their eye-hand coordination, it has to do with their, their physical balance. Exploring that and helping a player diagnose what it is that keeps them from passing that test, uh, well, I, I, can't, I just can't wait to get started on it. 
And that thing, we were talking about 500 and something tests. I, I think that's going to be minuscule compared to the uh, volume that we'll get in training. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's ultimately what it is, is it's, it's a strategic training library that is going to help every single athlete pass every test. It's, it's at least going to give them all of the training and, and all of the understanding to be able to pass the test. And, and that's ultimately where, where we're going to be going with it. So let me, let me wrap up the technology portion with just talking a little bit about scoring and how you might view your team. And this is one of the things that we're working through. I don't know if we'll have it all out by the time of launch, but you know, please understand this is, this is just a, a continual cycle of development for us. We will have continual uh, releases for stages over the next year um, in, in many different areas. So uh, just expect to, to every month probably be getting additions to the stages program uh, as we move forward. But uh, we initially started out with this concept of stages. And then really, as we started to get feedback from coaches, we realized, you know, it's not really as comprehensive as, as what we, we initially thought. <laughs> and so what we really began to find was just viewing an athlete through stage four or through stage three uh, wasn't a clear enough picture into the skill, the full picture of that athlete, right? So what we began to do, and I'm going to show you a graphic here in just a second that is rough. It is not the finished product. Uh, so again, please uh, don't hold this to us. Uh, don't hold this to this. Uh, we're just trying to give you as much information as possible. Uh, it's a little bit rough. It will be much more polished and, and perfected when we get launched. But uh, I just want to show you real quick a little, a little insight into how you might view one of your athletes. Think. Okay. Forgive me, I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, can you see that there, Rick? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so if you can see right here, imagine this is a profile of one of your players on your team. Now, I don't have these labeled, but the vertical columns, imagine if those were the categories we just looked at, right? So each vertical column uh, is ball handling, shooting, you know, eventually speed, agility, quickness, right? Uh, think about this a little bit like playing NBA 2K. When you go into you know, any, any video game that's a sports video game, you go into NBA 2K, you can take a look at any of the players on there, and they've got a, a player score, but that player score is a composite, really, of the skill levels of the athletes. So what we want to really be able to provide to you as, as a coach is a quick composite view of a player so that you can quickly take a look at where they're at and what their strengths and weaknesses are. And at the same time, you can be able to see what stage they are. They are. Now, really, in our mind, that stage is actually the view of the complete player, right? So they've mastered all the skills in stage three. Now, we all understand they could be a stage seven shooter and still be a stage three or four, and that's okay. The other thing that we're going to work on providing is actually a score, just like you would see in NBA 2K. Uh, and that's, that's for you and that's for the, the player. That's going to highly motivate them. Every test they pass, every stage they pass, they're going to get points. And those are going to go into their profile. So what we really want to be able to provide you is a quick snapshot to be able to see this is the point level of the player. This is the composite view of the player. So they're great in these areas, not so much in these. And then this is how... Uh, what's the word, Rick? Well developed they are in the game. Their their full development profile. They've mastered all of these things across here. Yeah, and you so complete player or showing mastery of the game in, right. in that. So uh, that's really a level of what we want to be able to give you. It's also what we want to be able to give your players amongst themselves to help them see who's good at what. Uh, to help them challenge each other. And it's just part of how they think. It's part of how their world works. Right. The, like you said, Rick, the second that you put a number on a player, you have unlocked something inside of them that immediately wants to get better and begin to level up. 
And what we want to do is not only provide the insight to that for them, the visual, but then provide the tool of what does it mean to level up? Because for us, that's one of the big things that's been missing in the game. Coaches all the time think about their players that, man, I wish they'd get better. And it's like, well, okay, let's say you have a discussion with the player, you know? Hey, coach, I want to get better. That's great. Um, hey, coach, uh, what should I do? Uh, become a better shooter. Okay, cool. What do I do, coach? And then it's almost like a lot of coaches are lost because it's really, really hard because now you have to, what are you going to do? Bring them into the gym at 6 a.m. every Saturday morning and then assess them and, you know, then give them the plan and then reassess them every you know, two weeks because they're getting better, right? It's what a personal trainer does. So what we want to be able to really provide with stages is a management tool so that you can quickly see the skill uh, level of your players, the, the, the impact that, that uh, they can make on the team. Uh, they can see it, you can see it, everybody can see it. Uh, and then you've got a full tool to, to walk them through automated to be able to get better. And, and really, I, I kind of wrap this all up to say, I hope, I hope you can see why we look at this now and we say, if, if we could get this tool implemented into a program, I think we could make the entire team 10% better. So imagine if all of your players was, were working through this and getting 10% better on their own, but you get to manage it and help, help lead and encourage them. But imagine this too. Imagine if all of your feeder athletes, right? Imagine if they began to do this now. So now not only are your current players better, but all of the players that are going to be entering your program next year, they're also better. And so cycle that a few times and tell me what that's going to do for your program. So uh, Rick, uh, I, I think yeah, I, I couldn't be more excited to see you know, where, where we land with this. It, is, it has consumed our lives over the last 14 months. Uh, it is going to consume our lives over the next 12 months at least. And, uh, and coaches, we, we are just so excited to, to provide this for you in your hands and just begin to get your feedback. Um, so uh, I just want to say thanks to all of you. you. You really do mean so much to us. You're the driving force for why we do what we do. Uh, this will not be perfect by any means. Uh, we're not expecting it to be. Um, we want to get into your hands and make it as powerful as possible. We will iterate, we will listen to your feedback. Uh, we are consistently listening to your feedback, uh, which by the way, uh, many of you have asked us, this is a little bit of a side note, uh, but many of you have asked us for, since, since I've been a player of basketball, you've asked us for a mobile app. Uh, a lot of you go into gyms that don't have the best reception and your, your internet doesn't work, so therefore you can't watch the videos. Um, and so we are going to be releasing this fall. We're, we're working on it right now, along with the Stages app. Stages will launch first, uh, but we are going to be getting a better basketball app so that you'll be able to download your videos into the app. You can watch them from wherever you are. Uh, so we heard your feedback and we began working on it. Uh, and we're going to get it implemented this fall, which is pretty exciting. I uh, also want to let you know, everybody who joined the webinar, uh, I'm going to be sending you, we, we literally just got this finished this morning, but we have a, a eight, about eight minute, uh, pretty comprehensive product video that Rick and I have put together. And uh, we're going to send that to you uh, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we'll get that together. Uh, we're, we're not even really ready to release that to the world yet, but we do want to get it into your hands because uh, those of you that are on, we'd love to just start getting as much feedback from you as we can. Uh, last thing I, I want to do is, is really talk through uh, a little bit about uh, how, how we're going to get athletes on, what, what some of the pricing is going to be. Um, so what we're working through with this, you know, we, we recognize that uh, it's, a, it's a work in progress, but it's also it's a massive project already. Uh, but the way that we're, we're going to price stages for phase one of this launch uh, we're going to take a limited number of teams, and, and the reason we're doing that is because we really want to work through uh, partnering with those with those programs. So, you know, if we were to take on a thousand teams, we don't feel like we could really serve those teams. And we honestly, we want to be on the phone with you. We want you to be reaching out to us, saying, "Hey, I, I feel like I feel like this in stage one is too hard." I think it should be changed this way, or, or you know, maybe it should be moved to stage two. We'd, we'd love to hear that feedback. Um, so we want to be working back and forth with you on how you're using the system, what you think about the system, what your players think about the system, 
So we're going to launch to a limited number of programs. We're going to take on 300 new programs when we launch, uh, just so that we can provide that level of service. And um, so the way that it's going to work is uh, you will be able to sign up for stages uh, at the launch for phase one for $300, which includes 15 of your players. And the way that I really want to try to break this down is imagine $20 per player to have an entire year of personalized training and you to have the management system that comes along with it. Plus, Rick's going Rick's to have a coaching system as well uh, that is going to, it's, it's going to walk you through how to use stages and a bunch of strategic insights and things like that. Uh, and that's going to be a library to grow and grow. So uh, some, of the, some of the coaches that we've talked to is we've tried to talk about pricing and keeping this as low as we possibly can. Some of them said, hey, no problem. I just pay for that out of my, out of my program's budget. Some of them said, hey, I'd go to a booster club and we'd just have, have the boosters pay for it. And some of them said, I'll go to the parents and just say, look, you know, it's $20 per player, but they're going to get this app. It's a full training system. And really our goal on this is to provide this as inexpensively as we can per athlete. Um, and so, uh, so that's what, that's what we're going to be working on. You can, you're going to be able to add as many players as you want. We're going to, it's going to start at 15, but, but you know, we, we had one coach reach out to us and said, I, I run an entire program uh, with, with multiple, multiple teams and I want to put 400 athletes on it. And so, yeah, our system will totally allow that uh, to put 400 athletes on it. Um, you know, it would just be a, a per seat, per seat basis for the players, but Really, what we've tried to boil it down to is twenty dollars per player per year, and we feel like uh, that is an unbelievable value. Um, you know, it, it will go up for for future programs that get into it, of course, because Rick and I are going to be putting so much into it. So, uh, I, I just wanted to say, you know, listen, coaches, many of you have supported us over the last you know year, two years. You've purchased all access passes. You've purchased systems as they've come out. And, you know, we stand behind our products, of course, but uh, we don't sell them for, for nothing, of course. We don't give them away. But, you know, every time you buy one of Rick's products, it's actually allowing us to, to serve you more. It's what's allowed us to go do stages. It's what's allowed us to, to build, you know, an iPhone app, an Android app, plus one coming for better basketball uh, for all of the coaches and content that's there. You know, it's just allowing us to innovate on the game. So, you know, for, for all the support that you've given us, I just want to say a huge thanks. And I, and I know, you know, Rick feels the exact same way. Um, you know, what you do makes it possible for us to do what we do, which is to serve you as coaches. So, uh, Rick, do you have any just, just quick closing words? And then I want to just open it up to Q&A and let you guys fire off some questions for the next 15 minutes or so. Right. And, uh, I didn't... Uh... I was looking up some stuff. Did you say something about all access members? Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if if you're an all access member, um, you know we we are going to be doing a first year special for all access members, uh, just because you're you are you're lifeblood. You you really are the thing that keeps our company going. Uh, but we're uh, in, in addition to your all access pass, whether you've got a one, two, or four coach. Uh, you're going to be able to add your team of 15 players for $90. Uh, so I don't know what that comes out to per player per year. Uh, but trust me, uh, break it down that way to your, to your parents and, and to your players. Uh, go down to a monthly cost, right? Uh, this thing is less than $2 per month to have you know, a, a personal training system on your phone. Um, it should make total sense to them. So, but Dan, for all access, it's going to show up in their library? Uh, for all access, all access is going to get the coaching portion of it. That's going to yeah. be included. Uh, but then, then the player portion, you know, for your players to get access to the app, that's going to be ninety nine dollars. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure that that was clear. The coaches are going to get it. I mean, the all access members are going to get the program. It's just uh, adding players to it. The players cost. We, we've got costs there. Uh, what'd you say? Ninety nine, ninety nine dollars for fifteen. Uh, seven, seven bucks each, something like that. Yeah. yeah. No, so. I'm ready. I'm ready for Q and A. Let's go. All right, coaches. Uh, we are watching the chat window right there. Please feel free to fire off uh, any questions you you have for us. 
Um, we don't answer political questions because we're not experts in that field. All right, how do we make sure we get signed up for it? Uh, hopefully you've seen our emails that come out. We've got, a, we've got an early access list. Uh, if you are a part of that, you are certainly at the top of the list. Uh, if you have joined our webinar and you are part of that, you are at the top, top of the list. So uh, we are, we're gonna be giving an exact launch date here pretty soon. We're just waiting. We've hit some snags with our, our development teams trying to push through some of the technology that's required to, to get this out, uh, but uh, we will let you know as soon as launch date is there, we'll be at the top of the list. Um, and uh, yeah, so just, just be ready, be waiting, um, and we'll, we'll make sure to get you. Dan, Dan there is a uh, Q and A uh, icon that you can hit at the bottom. That's got 11, uh, I think it's got 11. Thanks, Rick. I didn't even see that. So, okay. When passing the stage and using free throws as the example, do you have to hit the target amount once or a few times to pass the test? That came earlier, Rick. I think you probably answered that, right? Right. Uh, yeah, and the answer is just just once. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the free throw tests is uh, in an early stage is to hit seven in a row. Okay. And then the next stage, you hit eight in a row. And the next stage, nine in a row. And then there's some free throw tests that uh, have got to be 18 out of 20. There are some shooting tests that uh, wind up being out of 100. So, yeah, they only have to hit it once. But each stage, uh, like in free throws, free throws is revisited at each stage, and the bar is set higher and higher. Great, great question. Yeah, yeah. I've got another question here. Um, to move on to the next stage, do players have to complete their current stage multiple times or just once? Is it possible for a player to get just, quote, lucky and move on to the next level? Man, that's a great question. That's great. And that's what I didn't want. I didn't want you just to be lucky that you could do a thing one time. And, uh, but then again, you know, look, hey, there are some tests. Let, I, you're going to see it. There are some tests that are, you're going to say, well, that's just easy. That's just simple. You know something? You're right. It is. Okay. Uh, but we're going to revisit that real simple test that they probably passed on the first try. Uh, but we've established vocabulary for that. Okay. And we're going to revisit that. Te that test is going to be that skill in that test is going to be combined with another skill in a later stage. Okay. And I still want them to, you know, I still want them to go through it. So, um, and of course, I I'm anxious to get your feedback on, on some of this. But to, to answer your question, no, I, I wanted to take luck and, uh, uh, people's opinions out of this. And let me say this. Um, it's not possible to test everything in basketball. It's just not. There's some things that don't lend themselves to uh, a test like this. Um, uh, but could we – but whatever we can test, I want to test. So let's just leave, let's leave it at that. Great. All right. Uh, so <coughs> Zachary Wade's got a question. Uh, th this is something you and I have talked about is sort of the, the bigger scope of stages and where we might go uh, with the product and how it's going to, you know, how it could potentially tie in with a lot of your other products over time, right? So he said, I'm in love with your fusion program. What would your suggestion be for how to practice using both fusion and stages? Oh, oh, oh that's, that's, I can give you that pretty quickly, okay? My first 30 minutes would be stages. Let's go work on your game. Work on your game. They know exactly what this is. I don't have to set up. I don't have to waste time. They walk into the gym. They get started. They get their phones. They get started, okay? At the end of 30 minutes, uh, not only are they warmed up, they've got all the player development. They've got everything that we've been talking about in, in stages targeted 
targeted training. They've had 30 minutes of it. And then I would turn to fusion and I would get my uh, offense and defense in at the same time. And of course I'd put in uh, you know, I'd have those live scrimmages in there and uh, uh, that might save me, you know, I might go, let's say in an hour and a half practice talking maybe 30 minutes with stages and maybe 45 minutes of fusion so that I could have 15 minutes at the end for pure, pure game, game scrimmage. Okay. The more efficient we can help you be, the more time you're going to have to spend on other parts of the game. That's one of the goals uh, that I'm hoping stages will, will, will help. One of the problems I hope stages will solve for you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that just speaks to some of what we've, we've been sort of scheming and dreaming about is what could stages be? How could we use it? And, and I, honestly, I think part of that is we want you guys to figure out how to use it. And you'll tell us. You know, we'll give you the best, the best information we can. But uh, we really think it could be used to help strategically choose what system you run or a variation of the system that you run. Uh, we think it could tie in beautifully with read and react. And, yeah. and uh, I mean, there's just so many directions that we could, that we could take this. And we think that there's, there's also sub products that we're going to be building probably off of stages uh, over time uh, that are going to be possible. So, uh, all right. Lewis asks. Hey Dan, hey, Dan, one more thing before you get to the next question. I want to say it again. I fully expect this thing to change and morph and grow. I, I am not that arrogant to think that I've nailed it. That's what has stopped me from ever trying this. Dan's already mentioned this, that it's like, I know I, I, I'm going to incur such criticism from the coaching community because they're going to say, no, you should, you know, you should have this at this stage. By the way, it's another reason for avoiding ages. Okay. We avoid that, that argument about what should be accomplished at what age. What we could agree on is the development of the player. And that's why it's stage is not age. Go ahead, Dan. All right. Lewis uh, says if we coach different levels and some levels are only one year under me, what would it cost the players to continue with the program in the future years uh, where they are not on my team? Um, Lewis, thanks for throwing a very confusing question uh, out at us that we are confused on ourselves. Um, no, I, I uh, the honest answer to that, I don't really know how we'll handle that yet. Um, but we are building our systems and technologies to be flexible so that we can, can figure it out as, as the time comes. So I don't know if that would look like, uh, you know, a player just remaining on the team or if we can transition them into their own individual account. Uh, just, just so you guys all know, at some point we are going to open up stages to players. We're not ready to do that yet. And, and we chose not to do that yet because we solely wanted to focus on a system that connects coaches to players. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go through the coaches to develop the players. At some point, we are going to open up stages to the player community across the world so that anyone can join. Uh, and and, and they'll probably, it'll probably be something like, you know, $10 a month, $15, $20 a month, depending on, you know, what phase we launch this at. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of uh, the, the severe discount we're, we're trying to give you as a coach to, to get these resources to develop you. So uh, the short answer is I don't know. The long answer is, um, you know, we are definitely going to try to figure it out for you. And uh, we will make a way to, to make it happen. Okay. Uh, let me see what we've got. Do we have anything next? I think that's it. So uh, I think that that's all the questions. Listen, if you have any further questions, we would love to hear them. We, we actively watch our customer support channel that comes through. Uh, but if you just have questions over the next week or so, uh, try at betterbasketball.com. You, uh, you can just jump on there, just send us an email. And our customer service uh, team, they'll be able to get that off to us and we'll respond to your questions. Um, again, thanks so much for joining. Uh, we could not be more excited about getting this into your hands, see how it morphs, see how you use it. Uh, the first, uh, the first programs on the system, you are gonna, you're gonna be in close contact with us. We're gonna be in close contact with you. Uh, 
Uh, we really, really want to make this work. And we have put so much time and effort into this and uh, I can't wait to see what it becomes. So thank you everyone. Rick, thank you so much. And, Great job, uh, man. Yeah, we will, we will talk to you all soon. We're going to try to have one more webinar uh, to try to show a few more of the technology details. Uh, also, you know, I, I think we'll probably try to showcase a lot of the questions that do come in uh, over the next week or so, and, uh, and uh, we'll get you set. So, again, if you have questions, try betterbasketball.com. We'd love to get those answered for you, and uh, we will see you closer to launch. Thank you.